Simple days. If only every day could be this simple. Some days might surprise us if we let them breathe a little. We can try to escape routine and fall flat in the unknown, unless we breathe a little. Some days carry too many promises. No one can live to such expectations. Now and then things take a wrong turn. That's when we forget to breathe too, breathe through our lack of control. Until we stumble on simple days like these, hopefully next to someone we love, or at least in peace with ourselves, right in the middle of chaotic modern lives. Days that help us sleep better at night. Welcome to the Memento Mori Lab podcast. I'm Myra, your host and creative friend. In this episode, we'll talk about simplifying things and the simple things. Ever since I was a teenager listening to Avril Lavigne singing Why You Have to Go and Make Things So Complicated, it always felt like people would complicate even the simplest of things. I thought I would grow up and change my mind about it, but in reality the only difference now is that I am part of the group that overcomplicates things. As humans, we have created all these rules and expectations on what we can and cannot do, or what we should and should not have, that we've learned how to complicate everything and overlook the simple things. Like We can't even say no to something without a well thought out reason for doing that, when in reality we want to say no because we don't feel like doing it. This is an exciting topic because it can be applied to our creative process as much as any other aspect of our lives. Even the way we think about things. Like if you think about working out. For someone that works out regularly, it's simple. You just put on your workout clothes, go to the gym and do your workout. Or go to the living room and do your workout there. But for someone that struggles with that habit, the process seems far more complicated when they describe it. Putting on the clothes takes five different steps, then there are the shoes, the commute to the gym or the living room. Then there's the warm-up and each exercise and then stretching and then commute back, the shower and so on. The way we think about something, meaning how simple or complicated it is, has a direct impact on whether we will do it or not. And maybe because some things are so easy, like sitting on the couch, scrolling through IG, everything else seems way more complex. And for sure, much of the technology we see today has the goal of simplifying our lives, but maybe some of it backfires. Some things that were supposed to save us time end up consuming even more of it. Simplifying the way we think about things seems to be the first step in simplifying everything else. For someone like me, that the brain goes a thousand miles per hour, thinking of a million things at once, this is far from easy, but that's why it's so necessary. Whenever I catch myself thinking about something I have to do and thinking about each tiny step that will go into it, making the process seem dreadful, I have to stop myself and just reevaluate these steps. Some steps can be grouped together so they seem less daunting. Others can be simplified or even removed. So instead of thinking of that thing and its 37 steps, in my mind the process will take me more like 5 steps. It's all a mental game, a tough mental game that I am often losing. Sometimes all we need to do to simplify things in our lives 
is to literally just change the way we think about them. Other times we might need to simplify the actual process if we want to get shit done. As the quote goes, done is better than perfect. It's not that you don't want things to be the best they can be, it's just that perfect never gets done. For example, when I first started this podcast, it would take me literally five hours to just edit the episode. Can you imagine that? Five hours to put out a 14-minute show? That's absurd. Part of it, obviously, is because I'm not an audio expert by any means, but I think that's pretty obvious. But most of it was me overcomplicating things and making adjustments that would have very little impact in the end result, if any impact at all. Not to mention, I was recording multiple takes to choose the best one, and I was overthinking every step of the process. The episodes were getting done, but it was a struggle. The entire process was taking me the whole day, from morning till 10 p.m. With that in mind, here is a little poem that illustrates how my mind tends to work. Thoughts bounce. Thoughts bounce back and forth, off the walls, in and out of focus. Escaping my grasp, escalating, what once was one is many. Unrealistic improbabilities evolve like shadows grow by proximity to light. Though the light was never on, I failed to find the off switch. I knew that if things kept going this way, I would soon dread this whole thing and most likely quit. And I didn't want that to happen because honestly, I love doing this. So I started to simplify the process. Instead of multiple takes that I would then listen again and cut, I just recorded and cut as I go whenever something feels off. So when I'm done recording, it's pretty much edited already. I go through it once more to make some other small adjustments and I move on to the music and so on. What took me a whole day before now takes me a few hours. For someone obsessed with not wasting time like me, that is huge. And it's simple. And it makes me happy. And happiness is our ultimate goal, right? Simplifying things is nothing new. But as life gets more and more hectic, we forget about it. Simple isn't always easy to achieve. The greatest example of simplification and its effectiveness might be in art. Picasso didn't wake up one day and started painting those oddly shaped figures. And it's not like he couldn't paint realistic stuff like all the other painters before him. He could, very well. Like me, if I draw something odd or quote-unquote cubist, it's because I like doing it and I don't know how to do an anatomically perfect thing. So it's a crotch, but it's also what works for me to express myself. But he could absolutely do it. He started simplifying his depiction of the subjects he painted. He wanted to represent things in the most simple way possible and still have them be somewhat recognizable and have some movement and different points of view and so on. It was revolutionary at the time, but this is not an art documentary, so I'm not going to go into all the details. The point was that he was only able to really express himself and create the artwork that he did because he dared to simplify things instead of building layers and layers of complexity. Personal tastes in art aside, the impact his paintings had and still have is undeniable. Another renowned artist that had his work revolve around simplicity was Henri Matisse. Same as Picasso, he could paint 
as realistically as he wanted, but he found his joy in simplifying his figures as much as possible, while evoking all these emotion and movement. Not only that, but he also looked for simplicity in his process. Some of his most famous artworks were made of paper cutouts that he would chop up in one go. It's definitely a much simpler process than layering colors and colors and building values on a canvas. Though it sounds easier than it actually is. Simple doesn't mean easy, but simple looks easy. There's a thought process behind it, a reason, and everything art has. But it's simple. I think we also see that nowadays. Like artists trying to simplify things. Not only in the art world, but also in music, design, apps, and so on. Web comics are a good example of that. Like some of the most popular ones at the moment, they have very simple line work and storylines, especially if we compare them to the classic, intricate comic books. All this clutter that hits us from every direction loses its power once we start simplifying things. Because then it's like we train ourselves to take the simple approach more and more often, instead of overthinking and making things out to be complex. Maybe there's also a part of us that doesn't want our creative process, artwork or storyline to be simple. We want to feel like we are a complex, one-of-a-kind, special and exclusive creature. We want to feel like no one else in the entire world could have done this. There's only me. Me and my ego. We don't want to be challenged by others saying a five-year-old could do this. When things seem quote-unquote easy, our insecurities take over and we start to second-guess ourselves, isn't it? If this happens to you too, I think it's important to first keep our egos in check and realize that yes, maybe other people could do what you do, maybe not. But are they doing it? We don't know. So what, what are you going to do? Like just sit back and wait for them to do it? Doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't matter. There's a place for everyone. Are the other people putting out the exact same work as you would? I doubt it. So you do you, my friend. Do your thing. At the end of the day, diving into our creative process and going inward instead of worrying about output will bring us way more joy. Even if others are doing something similar, that's fine because as long as there's some of you in your work, then guess what? It's unique. There's only one you. The other thing is to consider that even though more people might be trying to say the same thing through their art, we won't all reach the same exact audiences. There are just way too many people in the world and many people don't like Picasso or Matisse, but they might like the line work of Mr. Doodle. Who knows? Whenever I start simplifying some process, and things become easier for me to do, I immediately start second-guessing my quote-unquote artistry. Because we have this romantic ideal of the tortured artist, which instills in us this idea that creating art should be a struggle. That the process of creating art has to be a torment, otherwise you are not a real artist. So basically, Art has to be difficult to do and painful. Plus, you have to spend years and years learning techniques and suffering miserably for not achieving perfection. Not to mention the whole starving artist thing. Maybe that works for some people, and that's great. But my point here is, well, simple. It doesn't have to be this way. Writing, painting, creating anything, or even Living our lives doesn't have to be as complicated as we made it out to be, or as other people tell us it has to be. 
Simple doesn't mean something is cliché or bad or not thought out. Simple can be beautiful, it can be moving, and most importantly, it can be done. As we simplify things and get more comfortable with whatever we are doing, we can always add more to the process. Simplification can help us enjoy our creative process and our lives much more. It removes some of the anxiety that comes with all the complexities and hopefully gives us brighter and lighter days. Not only that, but I also think that when we consciously look for simplicity, we learn to find more joy in the simple things. It's cheesy, I know, but it's true, like drinking your coffee in the morning, or in my case, sugar-free Red Bull, or giggling when you watch your favorite TV show, or drawing your favorite character, or dancing in the kitchen, or watching the sunset, or, I don't know, going to sleep. Speaking about that, here's a simple poem I hope you enjoy. At night, soft light evade the curtains, landing on the plain white wall. A few shadows dance to the wind, but the night is quiet. My head lies heavy on the pillow in the dark. The covers wrap around my body awake, too warm, too cold, no in-between. My eyes fight for one last look at the beam of light. Like anything else in life, it's all about discovering what works best for you. Making life your own lab and trying different things. Simplifying things can be so liberating. Especially for my fellow overthinkers and procrastinators out there. Have you thought about something you can simplify? Hit me up on Instagram and let's chat. That's our episode for today. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and help your girl out by sharing it with your friends. If you share it on IG, tag at memento.mori.lab so that I can thank you publicly on my stories. <laughs> Thank you for hanging around till the end. See ya!